Hi, uh, I'm Dennis and welcome to my YouTube channel. We're going to be talking about the Mosin Nagant. This Mosin Nagant is my son's. I made a YouTube earlier about it, uh, about its historical stuff, but <clears throat> this one here is talking about mounting the scope to it. And what I want to talk about is a lot of people get Mosin Nagants and they go through a lot of hassle to put a scope on it. Okay. Uh, my my druthers is is that keep it simple. If you already have a sniper rifle, a Mosin Nagant sniper rifle, reestablish it as a Mosin Nagant sniper rifle. Otherwise, put the other ones on the other Picatinny rail systems on it and stuff that's a lot simpler to put on and and you can put a scope on it and have fun. If you're not going to, if you got a Mosin and Gaunt sniper rifle, then you can restore it. And here's how how you know you have one. Serial numbers on top of the, of the barrel receiver. We know that. Looking down, you see the serial number on the side of it where the stock is. Right alongside the stock where it's at, you'll see it number set. And this number set. Okay, come on, focus up. Somewhere in there. There it is. See it? See that number set? Okay, come on. Well, it's got lines through it. Okay, these there's lines through this number set. That number set is the serial number of the scope that was mounted to this Mosin Nagant at the factory. That means inside the Mosin Nagant, you'll find these holes. You got two there. Let me get this where you can see it all. Okay. You got one here, you got one there, you got one up in here, and you got one up in here. That's the original mounting points. You don't have to reinvent a wheel now. All you need to do is get a Dremel out with a ball type little drill, I mean not drill, but a sander on it. Smooth out the center of those holes, of those two holes, these two center ones. Only these two center ones right here. This one and this one. Okay, that's the only ones you have to do. You don't have to do the one up inside here or the one down here. Okay, and you smooth out, make them nice and smooth. Center punch the hole. Once you center punch the hole, you need drills. I use four. Three to step up to the one that's actually the size of the hole for the screw. For these screws that you put in. Okay, these main screws that hold it. That's the last one I use. The other three are to drill out the, the metal, to get, get the main metal out. The reason why I do that is because I don't have to worry about trying to keep it straight up and down too much. You know, I try to. Yeah, of course you do. I mean, but it's not like a drill press. I, I don't have it. I have a hand. Just a regular cordless drill, and, I'm, and you drill. And you drill from the inside out. Okay? There's a reason. I'll explain it. But anyway, so you drill from the inside out, and you get all the way through first one drill bit, get a little bit larger, get this, that one through, get another third one, get that one through. Remember, always using uh, some uh, drilling oil. Oil is very important. The reason being, it removes the the uh, filing, the the bit, the pieces of metal that you're going to be extracting out of there. And then the final one is the important one. The final one, you want to set this down on your bench in a certain way, and you want to get the drill, the hand drill, and you want to try to keep it as straight up and down as possible. I understand I said try to. It doesn't have to be exact, you know, right to the degree. Uh, the reason being is because something else is going to play an effect here in a minute. But anyway, and you drill through. Okay? That's the size of that screw. Now, just screw won't go through because it needs the threads but now you're going to thread it and this is where the difference is as long as you're close in keeping it you know straight up and down and both this way and this way you know from that as long as you do that the best you can the tap you go from the outside to the inside and you start tapping and you keep that when you start it you, that has to be up and down watch it closely turn it a little bit 
maybe an eighth of a turn at the most, if that much. Oil, you know, back it out, turn it. Oil, back it out, turn it, and keep on doing that. The oil will help extract the pieces that the that the um, um, that the tap is removing. Okay, you need to remove those pieces of metals out of the way of the tap so it doesn't mess it up. It and you tap it all the way through, and all the way through that one. And once you've done that, <clears throat> once you've gone through that and you got it all cleaned up, you take a file, and because you went from the top side, and from the inside here out, you have just a little bit of a raise on the outside. So a file, real smooth, or a p nice piece of uh, 600 grit, it'll, it'll smooth it all out nice and smooth, just like the baby's but it is out here, nice and smooth, right? It'll make the same here. And then, you know, in here, you won't have to worry about it so much because the these holes will be kind of smoothed already from your drill bit. And you and the tapping doesn't seem to affect it on the outside because it's it's tapered on this side when it's coming through. Okay? Well, <clears throat> once you do that, you got that drilled and tapped. You set it like this. You put this on top of it, and those screws drop right in. And also, by the way, once they drop right in and you screw them down nice and tight, it's lined up. I've already put this in line on, on the block and looked it up and 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 check out the the hard line with the scope line, and they both right on the money. And the bench uh, alignment came out perfect. And I didn't have to reinvent the wheel. Keep that in mind. If you have any comments or have questions, down below, please. Uh, somewhere down here. Anyway, and uh, if you like my channel, hey, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit the like button. My kids, they always tell me, hey, it's important. So other than that, I don't have anything else to talk about on this. Um, I mean, I could ramble on about disassembling all this other stuff and getting it out of the way while you're doing this. That's kind of self-explanatory to me. I, I mean, when I did it, I had nothing on it. It was completely stripped down. You know, I don't leave any of this stuff in the way just because you don't need it. <laughs> anyway, if you have any questions, again, uh, down below. You have a super fine day. And remember, always keep your powder dry.